Make you bed, people. Don't be lazy. Alright, so you know the deal from the last video. Liter of water. Then uh, I'll let that settle for a minute and downstairs to do the AM faster cardio. See you there. I swear this always takes a lot longer than I anticipated to in the morning. When you're trying to force yourself to drink a litre before you even get your day started, it does feel like a little bit of a chore, but that's the thing with uh, anything health related. It's not always fun. Same thing with the hour of cardio every morning. Might not look forward to it 90% of the time, but it has a purpose. It serves a purpose, and I just need to shut the fuck up and do what I need to do. And that's exactly what you guys need to do. Just shut the fuck up and do what you need to do. There's people out there who have it 10 times worse than you. It's something that I always tell myself. It's something that my mum uh, raised me to understand. It, just to always reframe uh, your perspective. To be, I suppose, grateful to have the opportunities that you have and the ability to do what you do on a daily basis. Even if that is shit that we might not necessarily enjoy doing in the moment. I always feel really good after I do my cardio and after I drink my litre of water, so I look forward to that feeling afterwards more than anything, to be honest. Yeah, bottoms up, and I will see you down there. Today, once I get through this hour of faster cardio, I will uh, walk you through a bit of a grocery shop. Get through this first, the rest of the stuff I have to do this morning, and then we'll be doing that. Okay. So it is now half past seven. Considerably later than when I'm usually having my first uh, coffee and getting the, the day going. But obviously when you're recording this, it does make everything take a lot longer than it usually takes. I'll get my first coffee for the day ready now. It's just gonna be a Nespresso coffee. I'm gonna go the mocha flavor. Now, a little bit of a pro tip. Try put off your first caffeinated beverage until at least 90 minutes after waking up. Uh, that way you're gonna get the maximum benefit with the uh, minimum uh, downsides of, of caffeine, i.e. getting a crash later in the day. Andrew Huberman, a neuroscientist, actually goes into quite a lot of depth and detail in how this happens, but basically you wanna let your natural cortisol levels wake you up first and then have your caffeinated beverage. Usually, uh, yeah, basically I just have my coffee, enjoy it, and then slowly dive into uh, emails for the day. It being a Monday and all, I usually have a bit of a backlog of emails from the weekend to get through, so I'll do that. And uh, any that have come through since uh, this morning started as well. And yeah, uh, that is how I usually start my Mondays. Like I said before, it's half seven, now it is quarter to eight. Um, thank you for asking how I am and how was the we're all pretty much ready for that now, my friend. We've got something, we've got a date that we can kind of plan towards, you know. Great, and that's just going to get even better. You know? Well, there you have it. Uh, check in this week. My uh, calories got cut again. So now I'm on 275 protein, um, 160 carbs, and 25 fat. What's that look like? Fitness Academy. Energy drink number one. That's what you do when you get another calorie cut. Stopping time. Granddad sandals. <laughs> Breaking Benjamin, energy drinks, and grocery shopping. I'm not really a fan of green apple. Yeah. I see, I've always liked it. I never really liked it because I hate green apples. Go figure, but I like the green apple flavouring. Maybe go to Woolworths first, and then we're gonna go to the fruit and veg shop, and then we're gonna go to Cole. I don't like some things from some shops, so yeah.
So, get some egg whites. So, I will quickly disclose, I'm not doing like a full week's worth of grocery shopping today. I never do do that. Just to help get more steps in because I am prescribed at 15k steps per day. I do do daily shopping, so I just break up my weekly shopping into small visits essentially. So, yeah. But a bit of a tip guys, cage free, free range, it's all the same shit at the end of the day. Like, save yourself some money. I don't even bother with these or free range anymore, I used to. But what I do now is I just get cage eggs. Because why spend more money on the same product when there's literally no real difference in how they care for the chickens? Free range doesn't necessarily mean that they run around in an actual paddock like people think they do. So. OG carb sauce that is very, very inexpensive. And I prefer basmati, it's got a bit of a fluffier, drier texture to it. And I think, especially if you're dieting or on lower calories, it's a little bit more satiating and filling. If you want something that's easy to get down though, if you're in the off season, um, if you're in a growing phase, that sort of thing, I'd definitely recommend if you try and shovel as much in as possible to get something like sushi rice or something like jasmine rice because they're a little bit stickier, a little bit more gluttonous. Um, they're just easy to kind of shovel in and you can get a lot down quite easily. You'll notice that a lot of the vegetables I'm getting here today and also the fruits later on are low FODMAP and that's because I'm trying to reduce my um, high FODMAP containing foods just to help with bloating and, and just overall distension of the gut and aid in better digestion essentially. Red bell peppers or capsicum. Um, something that a lot of people don't know is potatoes and sweet potatoes actually have more potassium per 100 grams than bananas so great way to get your potassium intake up for the day gonna go the uh, tomato medley but something you always want to do when you get cherry tomatoes always check the base of the container to make sure that some of them aren't rotten so chicken breast mince I prefer eating my meat ground up, so it's just easier because I tend to not chew my food enough. Next up is the red meat. So my red meats of choice are usually game meats, so something like venison, um, aka deer, um, or kangaroo, because we live in Australia, we can get kangaroo. One, it's a little bit leaner. It's 97, 98% fat free. It's cheaper too than beef, to be honest, and I prefer the taste. Like I said, I like gamey meats got a stronger flavor to it. So anybody who's obviously dieting knows what diet sodas are. I definitely think Pepsi is better than Coke. I prefer the slight flatness that Pepsi has and it's also slightly sweeter. Okay. So, fat-free Greek yogurt and salt and caramel. So this is pretty much my dessert. So I basically get fat-free Greek yogurt some berries, frozen berries typically, because it's just nice to have that crunchy texture. And uh, then I'll either put a little bit of uh, protein paste, I guess you could call it, like over the top, just for a little bit of flavor, or some sugar-free syrup, depending on whether I've got protein left today or not. I'm gonna go frozen strawberries, because uh, strawberries are low FODMAP, you can eat more of them without having any issues when it comes to FODMAP related issues and uh, you get a little bit more volume for the calories and lowering calories per 100 gram compared to blackberries, raspberries and blueberries. And uh, I've got blueberries at home already so why not get some strawberries. Basically that is a uh, grocery shop, a food shop for myself and 
and my partner Kayla, she'll also have some of this probably. Um, so a few of the things that we have here in front of you uh, are things that both of us eat, uh, things like egg whites, eggs, um, and, and that sort of thing, and then the Greek yogurt. Before I dive into the food, I just wanted to explain a little bit more about uh, what I was going on about in the shops, which is the whole low FODMAP uh, diet thing. So basically FODMAPs are short chain sugar that are found naturally occurring in food, and they're not fully uh, digested and broken down in the body. They make their way to the intestines and they tend to get fermented there and can uh, increase gas and bloating related symptoms for people who are susceptible to things like IBS and that sort of thing. So. Uh, because I do have pretty temperamental um, gastrointestinal tract, I do tend to suffer from things like that if I eat too many foods that are rich in FODMAPs or those short chain uh, sugars. So I do try to limit the overall intake of those foods. Um, but if you're a perfectly healthy individual and you don't have any issues with that sort of stuff, you don't need to worry about following a low FODMAP diet. However, if you ever notice that there's a lot of general discomfort when eating food or following a meal, uh, it's worthwhile maybe seeing your physician and getting to do some blood work and look further into that avenue and see whether or not you might have or might be susceptible to IBS because if you are then this kind of diet approach might help you a little bit. Um, so yeah firstly we'll go through the fruit and veg stuff so the baby spinach uh, just to add a little bit more uh, greenery to the food uh, that I'm eating and add a little bit more fiber and just help with the movement of everything through the, the digestive tract. Some tomatoes, uh, fantastic. Uh, fruit, I guess you could say, but um, obviously we fuck. <laughs> not a vegetable, but um, yeah, tomatoes are just, it's not my fucking day. What a cunt of a day. I, I get the medley because you get a variety of flavors or a variety of color and, and it is well known that depending on the colors that you incorporate in your diet, uh, that, that can have an influence on the certain micronutrients that you get in your diet. So getting more color overall, like yellows, greens, reds in your vegetable and fruit intake is definitely beneficial if you want a more broad spectrum of micronutrient uh, intake for the, for the day. So yeah, then some zucchini as well. Again, another low FODMAP vegetable, very easy to digest. A few sweet potatoes. I'll mix it up. Sometimes I get the, the orange sweet potatoes, sometimes I get the purple some red bell peppers or capsicum as they call them in Australia. Yeah, that's that. And we'll go through the, the coals. This was the most expensive one out of the three shops, but it's obviously because we got the meat from there. Uh, so Pepsi Max, we got the fat-free Greek yogurt, the salted caramel flavor and the vanilla. And uh, it's also uh, lactose-free, that one, because it does have lactase added to it to help break down the lactose sugar in the, in the uh, yogurt. So because I'm lactose intolerant, that digests pretty well. Chicken breast mince, as I explained, a lean source of chicken uh, that is easy to digest. It's already pre-ground, so you don't have to chew it as much. Diced kangaroo, because it was the one that was available. Venison wasn't available, nor was it on set. And that is cheaper by the kilo, so I got the kangaroo. When compared to beef, it's a lot higher in zinc and iron per 100 grams. You're gonna get more bang for your buck in terms of your iron absorption and iron intake having a game meat like venison or kangaroo as opposed to cow, aka beef. Some frozen strawberries to add to the fat-free Greek yogurt for dessert. And then last but not least, we have the Woolworths shop, some liquid egg white. Now, I will mention when you're dieting, uh, you'll probably find that groceries are more expensive because you're buying specialty things like this. And grocery stores know they can charge an arm and a leg for little things like that. They don't make a lot of money off of that because they obviously don't get a, a great deal of demand for products like that, whereas people buy a lot of junk food and stuff. So junk food they can sell cheaper because they know there's gonna be a bigger profit margin overall if they just purchase larger quantities of that. But this stuff, because it's uh, uh, perishable, it's not a non-perishable and because uh, not as many people or not as large of a percentage of the world's population consume things like liquid egg whites as opposed to regular eggs or biscuits, for example. Uh, they're typically going to be a bit more expensive and it will jack up the, the price of your grocery uh, haul. Some basmati rice. Again, I said I prefer that one, just a little bit more volume for the amount of calories you get. And because my carbs are so low at the moment, I want to get the, the most volume out of my rice if I do have it. We've also got the rice cakes, which I use as kind of like a a cracker to eat the uh, Greek yogurt and the strawberries. Then you've got 
whole eggs. At the minute, I'm only having one a day. Um, 25 grams of fat life per day. Doesn't really allow for anything more than that. If you consume more than that, then that plus the trace fats from chicken breast and everything adds up pretty quick. In total, that costs $110.23. Because I wanted to show you an example of everything that I eat on a regular basis, I did get a little bit of everything. I already have a lot of these products here. And this is gonna last me a lot longer than a couple of days, a few days. This will definitely probably, some of these things are gonna last me for months, like rice, for example. Um, these are gonna last me at least a week. Um, the, the diet soda, probably not so long. Um, Greek yogurt, not too long, because I have 400 grams a day or 400 grams a night. And same thing with the vegetables, but the vegetables are obviously very inexpensive. It's really just the meat, um, the liquid egg whites, and the um, Greek yogurt that really bumped the price of this grocery haul up. But all in all, I'd say on average, I probably spend about $120 to $150 a week on groceries. Um, and it doesn't really change much, to be honest, even when I go into, say, a surplus and I'm eating a, an exuberant amount of calories. At the moment, obviously, I'm only eating 2,000 calories a day. Um, but in the off season, when I'm trying to push as much uh, food as possible and, and, and grow, I might eat upwards north of 4,500, 5,000 calories a day. It still works out to be about the same price because you're just eating more rice and things like that. You're eating less protein because carbs are protein sparing and therefore you're not spending or wasting money on things like liquid egg whites. You'll buy some chicken breast, for example, and you'll eat whole eggs because you have the fats and you can afford to eat them. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into what I'm currently eating to get shredded, guys. Uh, like I said, proteins, 275 grams a day as of today uh, from my uh, coach's check-in adjustments. And... Uh, Carbs are 160 grams per day and fats are 25, so it doesn't really leave much room. Uh, the meals don't even really touch the sides, but you've got to do what you've got to do. Look at all of that color, that beautiful color. This is by far the uh, biggest meal I have of the day. Uh, well, it will be now because obviously I had to adjust my nutrition plan today to suit my new macro targets because they got considerably lower. Um, carbs went down from 235 to 160 uh, and protein went down from 300 to 275. So yeah, bagel, some peanut protein powder turned into PB2, but it's lower in fat than PB2 and slightly higher in protein. So that's why I used it. A little bit more macro friendly for my macro targets for the day. A little bit of uh, reduced sugar or no added sugar jam as well. 250 ml of liquid egg whites, one whole egg scrambled and a bunch of sauteed capsicum red bell peppers, tomato, and zucchini, and some baby spinach in there. Got my morning vitamin supplements, a little bit of Frank's red hot sauce to chuck on there if I want it, and my second coffee. So gonna hook into this, enjoy this, and then dive into the emails finally, because it is now quarter past 11. I would have done emails well and truly by now, but I'm obviously trying to create more consistent content for you guys, so that does come at a cost. Uh, does delay my overall schedule a little bit, but nonetheless, I'll hook into it and then I'll get into the work for the day. But luckily, Monday being my only day that I don't have client check-ins, it's not too full on. So even if I, so even if I don't get to my emails immediately in the day, like today, that's not that big of an issue on a Monday. Yeah. Oh, first meal of the day, just before lunch or just before noon. It's so good. I will see you later on for my uh, training session.
seeing as it's been a few days uh, since I recorded the last clip in this vlog, I figured I'd just quickly wrap it up and do a outro clip because I haven't done one yet. So uh, with that said, if you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. If you'd like to see future content, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification too so you get notified of the new uploads. And uh, if you liked anything specific about this vlog or if you want to see anything in the future, drop a comment down below and let me know what that is. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Till then guys, peace.